Whoa, Nelly! That's another fumble by the Southern California Trojans. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. Whether you're going to watch this show on YouTube or wherever you're going to download your podcast, just remember, this show is free. And I really do appreciate your support. If you're watching on YouTube, become a subscriber. It's quick. It's easy. It's free. Just click that red subscribe button. When you see the thumbs up, it means a lot. Hit that thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that bell notification button. That way you won't miss an episode. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com forward slash locked on college and use code locked on college for an easy first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. So that was my best Heath Jackson imitation for all of you uh, college football history buffs who didn't recognize that Southern draw. Uh, Look, USC's offense in 2023 was was good from afar, but it was far from good. The Trojans, they look good on offense. I mean, how do I put this? When you're wearing beer goggles. Uh, I, I'd, I'd use another street slang, but I don't want to offend anybody. So everything looked good about USC until you got really close. And then you start saying, oh, there's a lot of makeup covering up a lot of blemishes. So, yeah, USC's offense, they did score points, but it's not like they were doing it consistently, especially during the second half of the season. And, uh, you know, if you really want to focus it down, those second and third quarters, mm, yeah, rough. We won't even get into these last couple of games of the season. Uh, they definitely couldn't run the ball consistently. Some of that was by design when, you know, Coach Riley, offensive coordinator, play caller, stopped calling running plays. Uh, however, those three yards that USC got on the ground, what they were credited for the other day against UCLA, that was their lowest rushing output at the Coliseum going back to 1996 when the Washington Huskies held USC to a negative 14 rushing yards. Want to know something else that the, uh, the offense couldn't do consistently? I... Said it right at the very beginning of the show. They could not hold on to the ball. And you're going to turn the ball over and ask your defense to save your butt? USC's defense? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure I, I like that winning formula, but hey, that's what happened this year. When the Trojans fumbled twice against the Bruins, that moved their season total. 11 lost fumbles 11 lost that's how many they lost sometimes they recovered what they dropped i'm not sure exactly how many times they put the ball on turf but it was more than 11 i want to say like 14 or 15 don't hold me to that number too many times is the correct number in fact uh the trojans were so loosey-goosey uh, with the ball in their last seven games they fumbled it and gave it away in at least once in each of those last seven matchups. There are literally only four teams with more than 11 fumbles this year. Lost. Washington State, they cooped it 12 times. Nebraska, Texas State, Clemson, 13 times. So USC was right there. Just They weren't the worst, but <laughs> I, they're not in the... Uh, They're not in that category where you want to belong. Let's just leave it there. And as much as I have been pointing out to the play calling and the substitution patterns, what I just went over there, that's the players. They've got to execute better, right? 11 fumbles, and that's not even counting the countless penalties, some drop passes, lazy route running, Uh, All that contributed to the offense's issues this year. Uh, The other position group that I think 
really underachieved or at least never found their cohesiveness. Touched on the running game a little bit with all the fumbles. Just kind of touched a little bit on the wide receivers there. It, look, the elephant in the room, the hogs, the dudes in the trenches, offensive line. I don't know. Look, did they underachieve? Did they just not find their cohesiveness this, this year? We know that there was a lot of rotating going on early in the season, those first four games, um, to kind of find out who they had, you know, what their backups would look like in a game situation. I don't know if that really helped. You really need to, I think you need to have that predetermined before you go into that first game. And they probably did. Nevertheless, I don't know if it helped. Look, they gave up four sacks against UCLA. And to be fair, this season, look, sometimes Caleb will hold on to the ball too long. So usually sacks are attributed to the offensive line, but you, you kind of have to know the the details of each. Each play is unique. And one of the criticisms of Caleb has been he'll hold on to the ball too long looking to make a play. It's just it's what you get when you have a, a talent like Caleb. You don't want to fault that too much, right? With that said, uh, the Trojans have allowed at least three sacks in each of these last seven games that they played, and 33 total during the regular season. Where does that rank nationally? How about 109th? Yeah, no bueno. Here, look, the two teams in the Pac-12 that are competing for, you know, a chance to play in the conference championship game, as well as make the playoffs. Washington, by the way, the new playoff poll came out. They were number four. Uh, they've only given up seven sacks. And Oregon, in the latest playoff poll that was that came out this week, they're number six. And they've only given up five sacks. The opposing defenses that USC has faced, uh, they were better the longer the season went on. So we knew the schedule was going to be more difficult, and we knew that obviously the opponents would be better, better defenses, better offenses. That was never more evident when you realize that the Trojans never led against either Oregon or UCLA on the scoreboard, not once. In fact, the last time USC's offense led in the game, well, USC's team, there was a minute 15 left in the first half against the Huskies. That's the last time USC led in the game this season. I mean, you want to know how, again, it's it's hard to say. You want to know how bad it was on USC for offense this year, especially when you have Caleb Williams. But Caleb Williams was named the Pac-12 Player of the Week on offense one time in 2023. Once. Guess who that came against? That's right. The worst defense not named USC in the conference name. They're called Colorado. Think about that. One game all year when a Trojan was voted best offensive player of the week. And you got Caleb Williams on your team and Marshawn Lloyd and Brendan Rice and Taj Washington and Zachariah Brandt. I mean, the list goes on. One time. And that's what's a really easy start start to the schedule. That's against San Jose State, Nevada, Stanford. I mean, that's just a staggering note to the season. Were there some positives on offense for USC? Sure, absolutely. I'll give you a few right now. How about 12 receiving touchdowns for Brendan Rice? That's a career high. And he had at least one touchdown in 10 out of the 12 games. If Caleb Williams never suits up for USC again, he's going to finish with 8,170 passing yards in just two seasons. Okay? That's a crazy number. That puts him at number seven all time. Ahead of Keaton Slovis and just behind Rodney Pete, who threw for 8,225 yards. So if Caleb decides to play in the bowl game, he's going to pass up Rodney Pete. Assuming. Now, this is a big number. Caleb is also going to finish with 72 passing touchdowns. 
as a Trojan. That puts him in a tie with Carson Palmer for fourth place all time on the USC career passing touchdowns list. Again, he did that in two years. We know how long we know how long Carson played at USC. That's a crazy number. And it just makes you wonder if USC had a running game to complement that, would you take less touchdown passes to be a more balanced offense? Yeah, I get it. Got a Heisman out of the deal. Just kind of saying. So now, basically what we're waiting for, USC's next matchup, bowl game opponent. See what the offense looks like after uh, you know some bowl game preparation. But that's it. That that's that was some offensive numbers that I wanted to go over for you. And uh, a lot of this, a lot of this research, I, I want to give credit to Eric McKinney from over there at WeRSC.com. So another reason why you should probably, when you're not making locked on USC your first listen every day, head on over there. Get some really good stuff. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. And instead of battling thousands of players, including the pros and you know the Sharks, guys who do it for a living, you're going to pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections. And then kind of just watch your bank account, see how big it gets. And now with the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League. It's a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues that you can combine their numbers. For example, you take an NBA player, you take an NFL player, and NBA or NBA player number of rebounds, NFL player number of receptions. Let's say it's 15. They hit that 15 and a half. You're going to say more than or less than. That's it. That's how you do it. Price Picks also even offers you a reboot policy. It's an insurance policy. So if somebody gets hurt, one of your players, you're covered. For football and basketball games, if you have a player that who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second half, that player is rebooted. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So go to pricepicks.com forward slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Go to prizepicks.com forward slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first match deposit up to $100. Locked on has also launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on sports today is here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts on locked on. Plus, our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Remember my post-game reaction show after UCLA? I'm sure you do. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. It's there. It's easy to find. You might remember I mentioned UCLA's third down conversion rate stat. The Bruins converted 13 out of 20. Whomever is going to be USC's new defensive coordinator, he better look at that stat and then throw something through the wall. Because every time I look at that number, I throw up a little bit like that. Yeah. The bile just kind of raises up into my throat. So... That is just a disgusting number. So who is, I, I, I'm using that as my opening to, to say, who is USC's new defensive coordinator? Who are they looking at? Everybody is hoping that it's going to be Jim Leonard, the former Wisconsin defensive coordinator, who um, has shown that he can uh, put together a pretty good game plan and stop, stop offenses in the big conference. And that's where USC is transitioning to next year. This past season, uh, he's been a defensive analyst at the University of Illinois. And again, I've said it, most people believe his, he's trying to get to the NFL. Now, there are rumors 
circulating. If you're watching this episode of Locked on USC on Wednesday, your first thing, you should be. But there are there have been some rumors circulating that it's basically it's a done deal. And the details are being finalized. USC is going to hire Jim Leonard. This isn't my first rodeo. When something like that is about to break, it's leaked to a national outlet. So far, no national outlet is saying anything close to it being a done deal. The only thing that I can confirm via a couple of sources is that Jim Len Jim Leonard did apparently make a trip to LA to have a talk. That's as far as I'm willing to go. Yeah, a couple of things. I know everyone thinks it's just money, but how much should USC pay for a defensive coordinator? Let, let's let's talk about the nuts and bolts here. Two million? Two and a half? Three million? How high should USC go to get a guy who, who might be a short-term hire, especially if the NFL comes knocking? And I'm referring to Jim Leonard. He... He has all the leverage right now. He knows USC wants him. He knows he could set the price. And the reason I'm asking, how much is too much? What is the right number? Before the season started back in August, USC Today, USA Today put out uh, the list of the highest paid defensive coordinators in the country. There were five guys at the top, tied, who were making... 1.9 million per season this year. Matt House at LSU, Jim Knowles at Ohio State, Glenn Schumann, Georgia, Kevin Steele, Alabama, Pete Golding at Ole Miss. Pete Golding used to be at Alabama. All five of those guys were making 1.9 million in 2023. You notice very SEC, very SEC centric in that group. The only person or the only team that kind of broke up the monotony. Jim Knowles, Ohio State. After that, your next group of five, you had DJ, Dur DJ Durkin at Texas A&M, Tim Banks at Tennessee, and Brad White at Kentucky. Those guys were making $1.5 million. Just above, you had Pete Hayakowski, Texas, who USC, is, many think, is... I know USC has reached out through channels, He's making 1.7 at Texas. And then just a little bit more than him at, up at Oregon, you got Tosh LaFoy uh, making 1.735 million. So again, all of those names, that top 10 list, again, very SEC centric. You got o Ohio State thrown in there in the top five. You've got Oregon thrown in there, but they brought Tosh over from, you know, an SEC team. <laughs> there was a report uh, that USC made a significant offer to Utah's defensive coordinator, Morgan Scaley. Now, that cannot be confirmed. However, it can be confirmed. Let me tell you why. We RC Scott Schrader said no offer was extended. And I know who confirmed that intel with Scott Schrader. So take it to the bank. You just have to believe me on this. USC did not extend an offer to Utah's Morgan Scaley. Doesn't mean he's not worth an offer. It's just whatever for whatever happened, both sides decided it's not going to happen. Again, I know everyone is in a race to, to be the guy, to say that, hey, I've got the best sources. But so far, everyone has been making a prediction I been correct. Here's how this stuff works. Again, this isn't my first rodeo. I'd love to be the first guy to, to report the news, but something at this of this magnitude, this is how it works. When the person of interest is about to be announced, whomever it's going to be, that person's agent or the person in charge of the whole thing, they're going to leak that info to a national outlet to start the media's engines going, to get everything churning. That's how it works. Now, here's another name that's uh, starting to gain some traction. And it makes a lot of sense. 
the Washington Huskies former head coach. He also was a DC up there, Jimmy Lake. Uh, look, he's a really strong defensive backs coach. The Huskies were always technically sound when he was doing his uh, DB whispering. You don't believe me? Go check NFL rosters for your proof. They're littered with Huskies, especially the secondary. <laughs> you know what I like about this consideration? And I understand that he was, you know, let go up at Washington. He's for allegedly, you know, having a physical. He hit a guy on the helmet too hard. It's football, guys. That wasn't child abuse. What I like about the, considering Jimmy Lake for this position, he's familiar with the West Coast and the college game. Uh, he's just spent this past season with the LA Rams in the NFL. That's going to get recruits' attention. And more specifically, because USC secondary allowed 31 passing touchdowns this season. USC literally sits at the very bottom of the country in passing touchdowns allowed. No team has given up more than 31. Just USC. Now, there are teams that could pass up USC this year because there's games to be played this weekend while USC is enjoying their bye week. But that's a huge number. 31 throwing touchdowns against USC. USC last year, that's six more than USC gave up in 14 games. USC has played 12, has given up 31 already. Wow. USC gave up at least two or more throwing touchdowns in 10 of their 12 games this year. And gave up three or more in six times. That's horrible. That suck. That is just plain S-U-C-K. Capital exclamation point. Yo, you know something else that needs fixing? On the defensive side of the ball? And again, this is this has to do with UCLA. Okay? I, I, I talked about the uh, <laughs> those 13 for 20 third down conversions. Well, the last two times UCLA has visited the Coliseum, they have scored a total of 100 points. Yeah, remember those 62 in 2021? I do. And, you know, we all watched 38 together the other day. 62 and 38, that's 100 points in two games. And to make it worse, UCLA has scored at least 34 points in each of its past six contests against USC. That's why they're three and three. Look, maybe we'll hear something before we get to carve our turkey on Thursday. I doubt they're going to drop any news on Thursday. Maybe it happens on Wednesday. If not, maybe it'll be a Friday news drop, and that way USC can take advantage of the national attention that will be focused on the Civil War game, Oregon versus Oregon State. I'm going to still call it a civil war. I don't live in Oregon. I don't have to pay attention to those stupid word games. So, go Beavs. <laughs> These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. And you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster, and they're going to do it for free. And you know how easy it is to use LinkedIn to find a job. It's also just as easy to create a job on LinkedIn, and it's free. Once you add your job listing, you're then going to add your that purple hashtag hiring frame. Attach it to your own LinkedIn profile, and that spreads the word that you're hiring. And LinkedIn is going to give you really cool, simple tools like screening questions. And that's going to make it really easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and hire. Recruiting the right person for your team means a better product. And it's why Link, the small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. 
Post your job for free at linkedin.com forward slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com forward slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Do you believe in karma? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I admit that the universe is a giant mystery. It's an enigma. No one really knows what controls the forces out there. But if you believe that USC got what it deserved this year because they broke up the Pac-12 two years ago, then why did Karma wait a year? Do they wait until the final year? Okay, if that's your side of the argument, okay, I hear you. Let's not forget. 11 wins and a Heisman last year that had everyone, including that sinkhole between Texas to the south and Kansas and Colorado to the north, believing that USC was going to become USC again. And yes, even with the losses at the end of the season in 2022, everyone thought USC is back. Oh, damn. Well, that wasn't really the words that were being used, but this is a family show. A kid, Oklahoma, you're not a sinkhole. There, look, there are really, some really intelligent folks out there who live in that state, who watch the show daily. And for that, I say thank you. And happy, very happy Thanksgiving. And congratulations for having a better 2023 than USC. Carve up that turkey. But look, the conference could have gone on without USC and its pet bear, UCLA. Yeah, I know, I know. Let, let's get back to the point. I'm always going to take my dig at UCLA whenever I have the opportunity. No one forced Colorado this year and then the Arizonas and Utah to jump to the Big 12 conference. Nobody. And Oregon fan... If you're such a strong brand, why did the Ducks, and to a lesser extent, why did the Huskies need to get on their knees and beg for pennies on the dollar? Huh? Why? Remember, you're the better brand. You're the better program. How come nobody else wanted to come play for the Pac-12? Why weren't the TV networks willing to fork up the big money? Karma, right? Look, all USC did was... Was the, they were the first ones to look out for their own future financial well-being. That's what this comes down to. This is about karma. USC sticking around to make less money isn't good business. College football is about rivalries. USC has their two rivalries protected. That's not going to change. Notre Dame, UCLA. They're going to be on USC's schedule every year for the foreseeable future. And USC also has Rose Bowl history against Ohio State, Michigan, and all the other guys in the Big Ten Conference who have lost to USC in the Rose Bowl over the years. So seven and five isn't karma. It's poor defense. It's bad defense. It's Alex Grinch. It's Alex Grinch's defense. It's too many turnovers on offense. It's not being developed and growing from year one to year two. That's coaching. That's not karma. It has nothing to do with the cosmic forces or God or the Pac-12 officiating or the schedule makers. Look, and as much as it bothers me to say it, look, USC just wasn't a very good team in some really key areas this year. Good teams don't turn the ball over. They don't They don't continue to have penalty after penalty, you know, hurting themselves. And really that just comes down to coaching and the players executing better. And obviously a little bit of luck from last year was missing this year too. It has nothing to do with karma. I know everybody's looking for their neener, 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 ha, ha, ha. USC is getting what they deserve at the moment. Enjoy it. I went through the COVID season. 
I went through 2021, I can deal with seven and five, even as a, as bad as they looked and where everybody was anticipating USC finishing the season. I've seen worse. So enjoy it. I have a feeling USC will be back just the way it works. It's cyclical. And if USC is planning to invest the Brinks truck into a defensive coordinator, that's worth it. I think USC will be okay. So that's it for this episode of Locked On USC. I'll be back with another episode tomorrow, even on Thanksgiving. That's the way we do it around here. I'll come up with something to talk about. So until then, everyone, I want everybody to have a very happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Be thankful for what you have. Even seven and five, there's a lot to be thankful about. So until then, everyone, you know what to do.